Yeah. We're all in the city. We have no money out. It's free, no money. It's, free. it's all free, no money. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you do this, you message WhatsApp. Okay, yeah. if you want to so take this, and you can give some out to people. This number go text karo. Hum ek order form aapko denge. This order form me of aapko like a uh, a boxers chahiye, t-shirt chahiye. Um, fir do din ke baad hum is kapre ko denge aur aapko denge. Collective aid. Today we're at the uh, central bus station in Sarajevo. We are meeting new arrivals, uh, so people on the move who arrive in Sarajevo for the first time. Most of them with the intention to move on to Western European countries. The people that we meet um, every day on distribution um, have often made very long. Uh, difficult, very difficult journeys uh, to Sarajevo. Often people don't have adequate uh, shoes, clothing, they've lost things on the way. Um, and, and here in, in Sarajevo, organizations like us, Collective Aid, we are providing NFI, so non-food items, as well as food, um, so people can rest and really recover so they can go on to make their journeys. Um, at the moment, this year, we're seeing um, a big increase in the number of people that are coming through um, a Bosnia, similar, getting near similar to 2018 levels. So it's really, really important that we continue to, to go to the bus station and we meet new people um, and in order to let them know about the work that Collective Aid does. Usually people text us and then they get this automatic reply with the job form link explaining that they can order through this link. We get all of that onto our Excel sheet. We go through it in the morning, go through the orders that came in. We save their contact in the phone and then send them a message. Then we get on our way to the warehouse. Because we've just moved to warehouse, like the past three days, we've just literally been counting. So this is all the men's item. So as you can see, we've got like thick jumpers, thin jumpers, we've got t-shirts, trousers. But like you can see, we're getting super low on certain sizes, particularly smaller, like, like smalls. So like smaller sizes, like, like with t-shirts, like long sleeve shirts, we're, we're like getting really, really low. So when, when items come in, we uh, basically, this is like the sorting area. And so like we place them in all these, we go through them, we check they're like good quality. Basically the whole idea behind this is like, it's dignified. So it's like, would you, would you want to be wearing something like that? So this is, th at this stage we make sure everything is good quality and is, is acceptable to distribute. And then once we've done that, if it's in immediate use, it comes into this section and then we pack the bags that we distribute. So this is a, a short walk from uh, Blasjuri, which is the, the single men's camp. Um, so we're kind of off the main road, um, and it's a short walk for for people who are staying in the camp to um, to access our distribution. Um, so yeah, we're coming here uh, Monday to Friday uh, around the same sort of time, so the guys know where we are. So we were distributing on the side of the road. Um, it was actually a really good location, but the police stopped us back in April. Um, and yeah, we weren't. We were told we weren't allowed to distribute there. So we've basically moved, moved locations now to this place. Okay. Um, do you have your number? Your order number? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, Medium, small. Okay, this is small. We distributed two different camps here. Most of the people are in Blaju. Blaju is a camp for single men. Most of the men are quite young. 
they would be like 20s, 30s, that kind of age range. The people that we see are mostly from Afghanistan, Pakistan and other Middle Eastern countries, but also increasingly people from East Africa, from Burundi, but also some North African countries like Morocco and Algeria. It would be around 20 to 25 orders that we do a day. A lot of the time it would be one person ordering for a group of five. Sometimes it would be maybe like 50 people that we distribute to a day. I have one next this. Thank you. Love you, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Now we're driving out to some of the squats and accommodations that the outreach population, so the people not living in the camps, are staying at. We're going to distro some hygiene. We're also going to give them our number and tell them about our services. Um, this is like a population that is often underserved because they're not in the camp, so they can't access the camp accommodations or the services that are offered there, not that there's that many. Um, so we do try and make sure that we are filling that gap. There's a lot of reasons why someone would choose not to go to a camp and we can only speculate without asking them directly, but camps can often be environments that are oppressive or uh, there's a lot of politics involved uh, about like who's getting served and who isn't. Um, they can also often be unsafe for certain vulnerable populations. So there are many reasons why someone would choose not to go to a camp. We still feel a responsibility to serve them. And so just because they aren't as accessible or as centrally placed as the camp population, it then becomes incumbent on us to go out of our way to make sure that they know what our services are. It's consistent, huh? Yeah. Consistent with the last group, which we just yeah. fired. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. For women and babies, we also offer menstrual pads and diapers. Uh, these are important hygiene items because without them, it can create health concerns, uh, so it's very preventative. We also run a ophthalmology appointment referral system, so we take referrals from the camp uh, for people who need to get their eyes tested, and then we arrange for them to uh, receive a prescription and then we pay for the glasses. The winter is uh, approaching quickly here in Bosnia and it gets extremely cold. Now from, from the border through Croatia, Slovenia, Italy, it can take up to 10 to 15 days walking. Uh, through the winter months, this is extremely difficult for people. So people have to be prepared. Uh, it, can be, it can be potentially, you know, life threatening. Uh, we wanted to prioritise thicker clothes. We're getting low on, on a lot of things, particularly the smaller items, which are our most needed for sure. We are going to be really pushed because we know that they're going to be not only the needs of the camp, because we are the, one of the main providers of NFI in the region, but also knowing that people want to restock and, you know, get the things that they need before they go on to their journey. We're desperately asking people uh, to donate um, any clothes that they might have um, so we can continue supporting people here. Alternatively, the best way to support us in Sarajevo is to donate money uh, to go on our Instagram or on our website um, in order to, to give us a cash donation um, so that we can buy some of the most needed items. Collective Aid is uh, largely run by volunteers. Volunteers are at the heart of the work that Collective Aid does. Like, none of the support that we provide to people would be able to to happen if we didn't have people who give up their time um, and volunteer for the organisation. Being part of Collective Aid um, is an incredible experience. Um, we have an amazing team and we're always looking for new volunteers, particularly uh, as it's coming up to winter and into the new year. So I would say if you're interested, um, we'd love to hear from you uh, and please contact us.